Well, thank you all for coming and uh, uh, being so warm in your congratulations. Uh, there's not much I can say but just to thank the mobs and mobs of people who've been uh, involved in lots of ways. Uh, and of course, I'm really delighted to share with my colleagues uh, uh, Osama Shimamura and Martin Chalfi, who I've known for quite a while and whose work is uh, you know, really, uh, of course, is, is, is what made all of this possible. Uh, and of course, I need to thank the people in my lab who actually did the experiments uh, when I still really can't do this type of stuff myself in my own hands. Uh, and uh, that goes all the way back to Roger Heim, who was the f who's right there in the audience, who was the, the first person in the lab to bravely set to work with GFP and uh, mutate it and put on the ski goggles and look for the change in color, for example. Uh, so I'm delighted that Roger is here. And then there have been many other people, too, too many to list in the lab, who, who have gone on to carry on this work. And all of that was made possible by the DNA that we received as a gift from Douglas, a generous gift from Douglas Prasher, who was the man who cloned GFP and uh, who made both uh, Marty, Marty Chalfie's and our work uh, possible. So, uh, of course, this was done at UCSD in the warm scientific environment we've got here, uh, which is a you know, great community, not just at UCSD, but the other institutions on the Mesa, which is a collaborative place that we can uh, you know, freely exchange all sorts of interesting uh, uh, scientific ideas. It was funded by uh, the NIH partly, uh, and, uh, the depart and more recently I've had been the grateful recipient of uh, DOD funding for the breast cancer work, uh, but the Howard Hughes Medical Institute deserves special thanks because of their ability, their wish to support people uh, doing crazy and wild things uh, without you having to prove that, it, that the work is feasible. And I think most uh, people would have said at the beginning this work was not very likely to succeed. Uh, of course, then there's the tens of thousands of biological users uh, who get great results and who uh, I can sort of feel the vicarious pleasure that when uh, they discover things, uh, uh, you know, that's part of why we build a lot of these tools is the enjoyment that uh, relatively one lab or a few labs can contribute to lots and lots of people's uh, experimentation across a very wide range of, of subjects. I, of course, have to thank the Swedish Academy and the Nobel Committee for choosing to single out this work and uh, to sprinkle fairy dust on me. I mean, I'm not any smarter today than I was yesterday, but you know, um, you're all here to, to, uh, um, you know, to, uh, to honor this. And the last of all, of course, is that if, if I hope I haven't forgotten anyone really important, oh, my wife, who put up with me for all these years. <laughs> but I need to now leave aside the human beings and uh, thank the jellyfish, because the jellyfish has been doing this for uh, probably millions of years, and nobody is very grateful to the jellyfish. In fact, nobody studies it actually anymore. And as I understand it, it is uh, uh, actually hard, hardly to be found anymore in its original habitat, which uh, where this was all the materials came from Friday Harbor in uh, Puget Sound. Um, in, in, uh, so uh, the, we still don't know why the jellyfish really wants to glow. Uh, we can speculate that it wants to glow because of avoiding predation, or maybe it wants sex or, uh, uh, and the signal to its partners. We can speculate all we want. We haven't figured out a way of asking the jellyfish. Um, and we don't know why, if it really wanted to be uh, glowing, why did it choose green instead of blue? Because the native protein in the jellyfish, is there a picture of the jellyfish up there? Too bad. Uh, it glows, the native protein glows blue, and the job of GFP does seem to be to change it to green, but it doesn't even do a very efficient job at it. So it's as if the jellyfish is sort of half-hearted and sort of sometimes want to be bluish and sometimes wants to be greenish, and we don't understand that. And finally, we don't understand if it wanted to be blue, why didn't it fix the first protein? And instead, it, it chose to invent this protein that's been so useful to so many people and is responsible for the three of us getting this honor uh, today. So uh, let's also uh, uh, toast the jellyfish at some stage. Thank you.